I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I'm an associate professor of pathology and dermatology at the University of Arkansas for medical sciences in Little Rock. And I'm here today with Dr. Sylvia Gottesman, who is an assistant professor of dermatology and pathology at the Zucker School of Medicine at Northwell Hofstra in Lake Success, New York. Uh, Sylvia, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And we are going to talk today about Dermatopathology Journal Club on Twitter, DermPathJC. Um, uh, for the audience, both of us are on the uh, ASDP social media subcommittee. I'm the chair of that committee, and Sylvia has been a member for, I think, a couple years now. Yeah. And uh, we uh, had a vote last year that we wanted to create a, a Twitter journal club focused on dermatopathology, and Sylvia really has been instrumental in making that happen. So tell us a story, Sylvia. How, how did this happen? Um, so uh, about a year ago, actually, uh, in, in not, not in these very rooms, but at the ASDP last year, we had the social media subcommittee, and we were discussing how Twitter is a fantastic platform for uh, sharing uh, ideas for pathology education, and how that some other specialties have already um, dabbled into this, uh, specifically PathJC, which stands for Pathology Journal Club. And uh, I noticed it without anybody telling me about it because I am a dermatology train and I thought, oh my God, it's fascinating. Those articles are amazing, but some of them are out of my specialty. And, and I thought, well, it would be amazing to have a dermatopathology journal club. And Dr. Gardner's first words at that uh, <laughs> meeting last year, we should have a dermpath JC. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how the idea was uh, born. Cool. Um, we, we all kind of talked about it. Um, and um, I, I'm just a junior member, but I'm absolutely excited that I'm on the committee. And um, a couple of months went by um, in preparation. And in March, March 17th, uh, Dermpath JC was born. That's cool. <laughs> and, and actually, this is one of, those, uh, one of the many times that a, a junior person has brought an idea to life. I always think that in my, in my own practice, it's usually my med students and my residents and fellows that actually make me get things done. And so, you know, this was an idea that wasn't my own. It was from a group of people. We had run a pathology journal club. We had started several months before, back in uh, 2016. And uh, so when we talked about this idea, I think it was great. Everyone was excited. And it would have probably gone on uh, and still this year at the meeting been like, hey, we should get around to starting that <laughs> Derm Path Journal Club. But Sylvia emailed me and said, hey, let's get this going. Let's do it. And I said, well, okay, roll with it. And before I knew it, like I think it was a week later or maybe a couple days, she had a website set up, a Twitter account set up, had already selected some articles for our, our committee to choose from to discuss. And uh, I was so impressed with that. And that's really why I wanted to interview her. It has been a group effort, but, but really it was Sylvia's initiative that has helped bring this off the ground. And I, I think that uh, uh, for posterity, they'll look back and be very thankful for the contributions you've made. Uh, so first, if I know I'm going to mm -hmm. pretend as though I don't know, asking you some okay. questions I know the answer to, but these are real, real PubMed peer-reviewed journal articles that we're discussing. Is that is that how it works? Tell our audience about that. Okay, um, uh, absolutely. So. Um, uh, every month at the beginning of the month, um, I go through the main dermatopathology journal, the Journal of Cutaneous Pathology and the American Journal of Dermatopathology. And then I look for cutting edge articles, not just case reports, uh, original articles, mm -hmm. so that the discussion can get even heated and longer and more <laughs> passionate. Um, and uh, and also, these, these journals publish uh, from authors that are not just from the US, but from authors that are from Europe. So it's amazing to, to see that their work and to have their work featured in our journal club. We also look for uh, dermatopathology articles um, th in, in other uh, journals. Uh, we featured one from the Archives of Pathology mm -hmm. uh, and Laboratory Medicine. Uh, it was open access and it was lovely. Some of these articles that we pick um, are not open access and we have incredible support from the editors of the journal. We reach out to uh, Dr. Christopher Shea and to Dr. Omar Sangueza and we told them about the Dermpath JC and um, they were uh, open to, to support us and uh, it's been a very seamless to obtain temporary open access um, so then we can provide uh, participants with an opportunity to read this article and to participate. Even if maybe they don't normally have access to the exactly. journal. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's been one of the things I was most pleased with. And when we first started the Path JC, before Durham Path JC, uh, the group of us that, that run Path JC, we got in touch with the people who run Neph JC, which is the Nephrology Journal Club. And a couple of those members really helped us a lot and gave us a lot of advice starting out. And uh, 
showed us the tricks that had worked for them. And I think I've been really impressed, though, to see that, that when we've contacted, you know, formal peer-reviewed journals and talked to the editors, yeah. that rather than them saying, what are you guys doing, Twitter, you know, kind of stop all this, this nonsense, they're actually really excited about it. Um, they, they work with the publisher to get open access given to the article for a couple months. And I think that's made it really awesome because people that maybe don't normally read or have a subscription to mm -hmm. some of these journals uh, can actually see the wonderful content that's there and participate in the discussion. And I, I, my, I don't have any data to prove it yet, right? But maybe long term we will. That, that yeah. I think that eventually probably this will enhance the, the readership and maybe attract new readers to some of these journals yes. because it gives people a chance to discover the kind of content that's there. So Get a sneak peek. Into exactly, the right. So, so explain to those who maybe don't use Twitter or don't understand how Twitter could be mm -hmm. used for a journal club. How does this like functionally work? So we pick an article, we pick a you know, uh, a, a certain time and a place or a certain time and date to discuss it. But mm -hmm. how does it functionally work? Like what, what happens during a journal club on Twitter? Okay. Um, so Durham Path JC is scheduled on the fourth Thursday of every month at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and even though we start sharply at 9 o'clock, we don't usually wrap up until 10, <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 15. Um, and uh, during that time, I log into the Durham Path JC account and I have pre-prepared uh, uh, tweets um, that are some uh, take-home points, uh, some very interesting statistics from the uh, article. Uh, I always include the hashtag DermPathJC, um, and and then sometimes I even post photos with these uh, tweets. So not only people can respond to my tweet by either liking it, retweeting it to share it on their profile, but they can also comment below it. They can also ask a question if there's something that they're confused about or they have uh, interested in or if they want to spawn off a research idea uh -huh. off of it. The most important thing we always remind everybody is to, to put the DermPathJC uh, Derm hashtag so that um, uh, people can always look back even if they missed uh, the discussion. So, And it's not just me uh, tweeting. Um, uh, all of the other participants can uh, put their individual tweets, mm -hmm. uh, their individual impressions include the hashtag DermPathJC, and everybody who is there that hour can respond. Um, uh, we had a, a tweet back in June that there were 29 different comments. It was fantastic uh, to see that kind of uh, interest from, uh, from everybody. That's, that's awesome, and I, I feel the same way I'm, every time I'm blown away by how many people from all over the country and from other countries even mm -hmm. participate in this discussion about one article for an hour. and. Um, and I think that's what I, when I tell people about this Twitter journal club idea and they're like that, what are you talking about? How does that even work? Um, that's what the point I bring up is when you have, I mean, how many attendees have we had recently? So in the last six months, we were able to look at our uh, data. We've had 189 individual participants. participants. That's amazing, right? And so if you a average that out, you know, you're getting 30 or 40 people coming together to talk about uh, maybe an esoteric little small subset of medicine, one article from a Dermpath journal. And what's cool is, it, I mean, I tell people, like, when was the last time you had 30 or 40 people show up at an in, in real life person face to face uh, journal club? And everyone says never because, because yeah. no one has time for that in their schedule, yeah. right? During the day, you're mm -hmm. busy, you've got work. At night, you've got family and kids, and, and it's hard to go out to a meeting or to get everyone together at the same time and place, let alone the geographic barriers that mm -hmm. you can, would never be able to have people yeah. from all over yeah. the country or the world participate. Yeah. And to me, to see that kind of, uh, it's made the world of Derm Path smaller and brought us yeah. all closer <laughs> together, which is, I mean, I think that's wonderful and I, I really love that. So, Absolutely. and for, for viewers who may not be familiar with Twitter, um, we'll, uh, there, people often wonder, well, what's a hashtag? So hashtag is a pound sign followed mm -hmm. by a word, and it can be any word. And, and basically the way I explain hashtags to people is that they're clickable, searchable labels, topic mm -hmm. labels. Mm -hmm. So if you click on hashtag DermPathJC, it will bring up every single tweet. If you, if you click ha that hashtag in the latest button that shows them chronologically, it'll bring them all up in chronological order. And you can go back and read through the whole discussion. At first, it seems a little disjointed until yes. you're used to Twitter. Yes. But the nice thing is that it's all there and easily searchable. So out of the millions and millions of tweets out there, you can easily pull up all the ones from the, 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 the discussion. The of uh -huh. that particular exactly. month. So mm -hmm. people that you know live on the other side of the world and are in a different time zone and don't yeah. want to wake up at 3 in the morning to participate, that's okay. They can check it the next day and still add their comments. And, and people can even come back later, right, yeah. and add comments. Yeah. 
We also have another fantastic resource uh, for any of the participants. Uh, we have the Dormpath JC website, and it's www.dormpathjc.com. And every uh, single month, uh, about a week after the Journal Club, we post a post-Journal Club summary mm -hmm. uh, that it's very easily readable, that we not only include highlights from the article, but also highlights from the discussion, and, and sometimes even extra content that we decided to share. For example, links to another interesting PubMed uh, um, article that, uh, is in to that has a topic similar to the, to the one we're discussing. So it's nice that you're, you're not just having a discussion there and then it's done and only for those participants. You exactly. really can summarize it that people can refer back and see what was talked about and maybe new ideas yeah. for research or practice can come yeah. from that. Uh, yeah, and I think it, one of the nice things is, uh, has been for me that it's not just about discussing that article, but also, I you know, talking about practical points for practice, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yep. how many of you use this immunostain versus that one? Like the, the article maybe was discussing that for something and then we can yes. have a tangential discussion from it. And it's cool to be able to pull all the people there and see like, how do people actually practice uh, in, in, in their practice setting? And I yeah. think that's really fascinating yeah. and really uh, interesting to me, you know, to be able to compare the way I handle certain things with the way yeah. other people do. And uh, I always learn something from that. So um, where do you see Dermpath JC going in the next year or two? So um, Durham Path JC hasn't been just about education, it's also been about bringing people together. So in the future, I, I hope even more people will know about this, hopefully as a re result of this video, a and more people join the discussion. We've had um, participants from 15 different countries, and I really hope that number will rise. Uh, and we encourage not just dermatopathologists, but also pathologists that are interested in derma der dermatopathology to join us, dermatologists, dermatology residents, medical students interested in Anyone pathology. Anyone who's interested. <laughs> and even, I, I can't remember, have we had patients come and, and be involved in Dermpath JC yet? I can't remember. I know in the Path JC we've occasionally had patients actually chime in, cancer patients or, mm -hmm. or other people that are patient advocates chime in in the conversation and, and say, hey, thanks for what you guys are doing in, in pathology. And I think this is another, you know, idea. another benefit is that, yes. you know, because it's all happening publicly, other people can participate in the conversation who maybe would never be privy to coming to a meeting of dermatopathologists, right? And uh, it kind of opens up our field to yeah. the world maybe a little more. Um, I think uh, you are going to be presenting some data, right? You uh, submitted a, yeah. submitted an abstract and got a platform. Is that right? Yes. So when is your your platforms this afternoon? Uh, this afternoon at four fifteen. Okay. So give us a sneak peek summary. What what's the the major stats that you found? that were really amazing. Uh, so since uh, since the start of Dermpath JC, um, well, our data is from the last six months. We've had 3,891 tweets. And th granted, that's all the tweets that included Dermpath JC. I'm sure but there still, were a few that sneaked in yeah, there that, right. <laughs> that didn't, <laughs> didn't have the hashtag. <laughs> didn't have the hashtag. We've had over 7 million impressions, and that's potential tweet views. Amazing. And, and that's huge. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really huge. Uh, 189 participants. and. Uh, we, we hope Dermpath JC will just continue to grow. Yeah, so we, if, only if you're out there and you haven't joined Twitter yet and you're, you keep hearing people tell you, wow, this is a great reason, I think, to, to start, even if it's just to come and participate and, uh, and uh, learn from the, the Journal Club, the Dermpath JC Journal Club. And uh, we also think there's a great community of dermatopathologists on Twitter, and we really love getting to interact with each other. You know, Sylvia and I may see each other once a year at this meeting, yeah. but mm -hmm. we talk to each other multiple times a week on Twitter. And I, to me, that I use social media for lots of different things. But one of the most uh, satisfying things to me has been able to meet and, and continue to interact with so yeah. many wonderful people, uh, both near and, and far, which has been really a wonderful um, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're really especially want to give thanks to the, the journals out there who have really been supportive of this and have uh, let us do something that maybe is a little unconventional. So <laughs> thank you, uh, JCP, American Journal of Derm Path, Archives of Pathology thank Laboratory you. Medicine, all the journals that have been involved and will be involved in the future and their publishers. Thanks very much for, for making this contribution. And uh, if you're interested in participating, we will, uh, after this video is posted on YouTube, we'll add links in the comments down below to give you some info about how to use Twitter, uh, info about the Dermpath Journal Club so you can go to the website. So just look down below in the comment section and we'll have uh, some information for you. So uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us this update. Thank you so much, Jared. And thank you for joining us viewers at home.